What's going on everybody? Today, I want to talk about a new plugin by Spinning Records called Bass. First, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about what it does and the interface, how to use it, and then I'm going to show you guys some cool examples about how I like to use it. All right, let's get into it. All right, first things first, what is bass? All right, then after we talk about what it is, we're gonna talk about the interface a little bit so we know how to go through it. There's actually some pretty good videos showing how to use most of the features, which I'll link in the description, so I won't repeat too much information, but I will show you the gist of it. Now, one thing I didn't see too many videos on is the split audio function. And I work in Ableton, so specifically we'll be talking about split audio in Ableton. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then I'm gonna show you some I don't want to say advanced, but maybe some out of the box processing tips that could help take bass to the next level. Let's get into it. So what is bass? Well, bass is a kick and bass synthesizer that treats the bass and the kick as a combined musical entity. They are linked in terms of volume, spectrum, and timing, so they work together harmoniously in your mix. The interface is supposed to be simple and optimized toward getting the best bass line as opposed to tweaking your sound endlessly. And that is how it was explained to me. And yes, I think the interface is very simple and optimized. Let's actually jump into it real fast so we can see what we're working with. And remember, I'll leave a link down in the description to a couple of videos that go through each one of these sections very clearly. So there's no point in repeating that. All right, so this is actually pretty easy to use. Okay, the interface is pretty self-explanatory, but I will go over the basics. So first off, how do we even start using it? Well, it is actually a synthesizer. So I'm gonna open up a MIDI clip and I'm gonna start inputting some MIDI, right? So I'll start with a note there. Now notice that this note will change depending upon the pitch of the note that I add. So here's a C and then I can go up to As I keep going up, you'll hear the pitch go up. So you find the key of your song, we'll just say it's an F, and now you've got your kick going, right? So if I wanted to be four on the floor, we would set our grid to quarter notes, right? And then we'd make four on the floor, four on the floor, four quarters in a dollar, four beats in a measure, okay? So now I've just got myself a kick. And now let's look at the interface real fast. Notice that when my kick hits, it actually blinks a little bit. So you can see that the kick is actually on this side. So if we were gonna split this up in two halves, then this half would be for the kick. Okay, well the other half is obviously for the bass, right? So how do we get it to play? Well, there's a couple of ways. If we're gonna be in normal mode, meaning we're gonna trigger both the kick and the bass at the same time, we now have to understand that this half is for the bass, this half is for the kick. So that means that there's a side chain or a crossover point right there in the middle. This is one of the things the plugin is doing. It's giving you a cleaner side chain so you don't have that mud and masking on your bass and kick. Also, you're getting that cool house kind of pump feel and you do have control of it. So for me to even hear this bass, I have to go and select myself a bass sound. So let's go over here into our preset window. So now they've got it, you know, separated by artist, genre. Basically, you got your kicks down here and you got your basses on this side and they've paired up what they think is cool or whatever. And you could go with that. Like if I select, like, I don't know, let's just say awakening, right? Now we could hear what this sounds like. Now we got our bass, right? Cause we got one paired up with it. Now there's a few things that we could do. First of all, let's go back into the preset browser and I'll show you that I can switch these from here or I could switch them right from the arrow. Or I can actually go and unlink them and decide to use whatever combination that I want. So let's go back to the bar fight on the bass. So now that we've selected our sounds, we can go ahead and dial them in a bit if you want to stay here in normal mode. And I think this is sort of the appeal for this plugin because this is going to go for the beginner producer, the beginner to intermediate producer who's got a lot of great ideas in their head, but they're having a hard time mixing and the mixing of the low end is really holding them back from expressing themselves. So this is kind of a one-stop shop for that if you want it to be. So let me show you what I mean. I can go over here and adjust my volume right here in the track. The more I go to the left, I get more kick, less bass. The more I go to the right, I get more bass, less kick. And I can adjust the size of my kick, so to speak. So right here, I'm getting a nice 16th note chain, but as I tighten this up, my transient will get tighter. Cool. So you got that to dial in. Now you got this color knob. This color knob is gonna actually add saturation to your bass and bring out some of the harmonics. 
be cool to probably automate that. And then you've got obviously the length of your bass. So if I make it shorter, you can see that if I just have it at 16th note, right, you're not going to hear any bass because right? It's, it's set to the same length as the side chain. But as I add it a little bit more and more and more, you can hear it more and more and you can dial that in if you want. And that's pretty much the interface. Okay, so let's say we wanted a little more control. Well, we could do that too. And that's kind of what I like about this plugin. It starts off easy and holds your hand if you want it to, but also if you want to take a little more control, it lets you do that too. So let's say I want to go ahead and put this into split MIDI mode. I want to go ahead and do that. So what this is going to do is it's going to split up the information. So now if you listen, there's no kick happening, right? And that's because the kick is going to be on a different octave. So let's go ahead and copy, paste, and I'm going to go ahead and pull this down an octave with shift and the down arrow. And then you can see that that's the high kick, right? And I can go ahead and put one more down here. And now let's hear it. Great. And now we're getting the same result as before. But the difference is I can switch some of these notes if I want now. So now I can put a different bass line in or a different kick pattern in for that matter. Make these guys like that. So now we have separation in what we input between our kick and our bass. But let's take that one step further with split audio. But before we jump into it, let me encourage you to subscribe and hit the little bell where you'll get notified every time I have a new video come up. As an Ableton certified trainer, I talk about everything from sound design to pro tips to plugins you need to have. Plus I make bass music under the name Scarlet. So stay connected. So now check this out. If I go over here, I'm gonna open up a new audio track with command T and I'm going to take the input from the bass plugin. And now I've got right down here, I've got, look, I've got a bass option, right? So if I click that, obviously if I bus a signal to a channel in Ableton, you have to put it on in. Remember that I'm going to go back to this, turn split audio on. Now check this out. Okay, so that's what split audio does. Split audio allows you to split the plugin into two channels. Okay, one sends out the bass now and one sends out the kick. And this allows us to process them differently. So we could have it treat the same, we could have it process it the same, but the input in MIDI could be different. And with split audio, now we can actually process it differently. Let's jump into one of my tracks. I'm gonna show you guys how I use this and how I use some cool processing to make it kind of pop. So let's take a quick listen to this and then we'll talk about how I use use bass in here. So check this out. Here we go. I'm going to go into my drums and I'm going to go into my bass folder. So here we go. You can see that I used a couple of the techniques we talked about. So first off, let's open up bass. Okay. And we can see that we are using split MIDI. We've got our kick down here and we've got our bass line. And I'm using this to follow the synths. And I took it the step further, like we talked about in the video, and I used split audio and I sent them out to their own tracks. So you could see that I've got my kick here living in my drums folder. And this is one of those little pro tips that I personally don't like to treat my kick and my sub or my kick and my bass as the same instrument. I can see where the thought process went there and it's good to contain them in the plugin like this, the same instrument, so they don't have frequencies fighting. But when you're mixing, I personally like to put them in separate groups. So I'm allowed to do that with split audio. So two things that I did to take advantage of this. One, I'll jump into my kick. And I'll say, check this out. On the transient, I didn't really like the transient of the kick um, that I chose, but I liked the sound of it. But I was able to enhance that with a transient shaper, plus a little bit of EQ, and I controlled the limit of it. So what I did to the sub was actually really cool. I went in and I split the signal. So if we listen to this, I solo it, you could hear that the sub, here's what the sub sounds like. 
But it sounds pretty gnarly, right? You get yourself a nice sub in the middle, but you also get a cool wide top end. Like, how did I do that? Well, I went here and I split the signal. I went, I split the EQ. Okay, so on the top, I cut out everything below 100. And I added a little bit of chorus to that. And then on the sub, I said, okay, everything below 100, that's the only thing on here. So no chorus got onto that chain. And then I used a utility, ensuring that my low, low sub is going to stay mono. And then I set my limit. I hope that gave you guys some cool processing tips. If you want to see more about processing like this, please let me know in the comments section. I'd love to do it. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for bass. I hope some of you learned something and found that useful. Other than that, I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.